So, unique selling propositions. Today's gonna be a bit of a rant, and, and, and I'm sorry about that. There's, when it comes to effective communication and marketing, there's no such thing as a unique selling proposition that's worth putting your brand behind. Now, this is not a marketing channel, although sometimes I make it feel like it, but um, this is something we teach at the Wizard Academy School. So first, what are, and by the way, I'm Daniel Whittington, Chancellor at Wizard Academy and Whiskey Marketing School in Austin, Texas. I need a little more of that, come on. Uh, what are unique selling propositions? Unique selling propositions are a stupid idea came up with by uh, salespeople and marketing departments with a lack of imagination. <laughs> what they are is an attempt to look at your business and find the way that the service or the product you provide is truly unique from everybody in your industry and then highlight that in marketing and advertising. Now, we at Wizard Academy think that that's stupid and a terrible idea, even if you do it, because the process of attempting to do it creates truly terrible things and truly terrible marketing, but also because when it comes to effective communication, there's no such thing as a unique selling proposition that's worth money in an industry. So, if you have a unique selling proposition, and say you're a Netflix and you just were the first ones to start streaming, I think they were the first ones to start streaming, then, hey, guess what? Netflix is the only streaming service now, right? Still, to this day, that's unique, right? No, of course not, because they stumbled onto a brilliant idea, and as soon as the rest of the industry figured out it was a great idea, the rest of the industry followed suit. If they had put all of their marketing bones behind that idea, then the moment they're just one in a crowd, they have to revamp their, all their marketing from scratch. If you are a um, service industry, HVAC or plumbing, you don't actually have a unique selling proposition. There's nothing that you can do that another plumbing company can't do. Now I know you think you do it better, and I know you think you do it with more attention to quality, or if you're a dentist, there's really nothing you can do that another dentist can't do. Not effectively, right? So, if it is truly unique, and say you stumbled onto an idea that nobody else is doing, and it's powerful, and it makes money, then by all means do it. <laughs> but, but don't make that the core tenant of your marketing, because within about six months to a year, the rest of the industry is gonna pick up on it, and you won't own it anymore and then uh, you need a whole new plan. And if you do find something truly unique and no one in the industry is doing it, the odds that it is worth anything is very low because you're not the only smart person in the world. <laughs> and so what often happens is people and idiot marketing people and brand agencies come in and they wanna find your unique selling proposition. And because at the high level, Either it makes money and everyone's doing it or it doesn't make money and so no one's doing it, but you are. There's nothing there. They have to drop down the ladder of important things because their marker is what's unique, what's unique, what's unique about your service or your product. And they have to go far enough down the ladder to find something that you're doing that is truly unique. Uh, your uh, service people wear booties on their shoes when they go into the house to keep the floors from getting muddy and they're pink. Uh, you guys use red screws on everything. Uh, you guys fill in the blank, right? You guys have an 18 generation family history. Uh, you guys use pot stills shaped like a swan. You guys, <laughs> right? And then you put all of your effort behind that thing and it's a silly, pointless, and not powerful thing. And that's what's frustrating. Now, what should you be doing is the question, but first let's talk about Still Austin. This Still Austin is local to Austin. They're just south of 290 on the south side of Austin. They have a great location and spot and a really cool vibe and a bar and an outdoor hangout area. And this is part of their like specialty releases around seasons. This is their winter 2023 blue corn bourbon. And, uh, it is bottled in bond, which means it meets all the rules for bottled in bond. So four years old, 50% or 100 proof, 50% alcohol or 100 proof. And it's bourbon and new oak and aged one season, which is winter 2023. All distilled in one season or one master distiller or head distiller, which in this case is uh, John Treppel. And um, 
This one is cool because it's got a larger percentage of blue corn. There are only a handful of people doing blue corn um, in North American craft. Uh, and a few of them are doing like almost all or 100% blue corn, which is like, I think Wood Hat was doing that. But this one is 26 blue corn, 25 white corn, 5% malted barley, and 44% rye. So this is a high rye, air, like wide varietal corn bourbon aged in Texas. This should be pretty unique. Mmm. And it is. For some reason, I expected it to sort of jump out of the glass a little bit more, but it's actually coming out of the glass kind of soft and gentle. I am getting that sort of dusty corn, for lack of a better, like slightly sweet corn dust and grain bin. But then behind that, it's almost floral, like, like super dense, heady garden. And then there's sort of a lighter touch baking spice thing going on. Yeah, if you let it sit for a second, the rye notes start to pop. Hmm, okay, there it is. So there's this sort of soft touch black tea, sweet tea, with a little bit of a sort of herbal note to it. Like if you get those black tea blends, like instead of just PG tips or uh, was it Thai Fu? Um, if you get one of these like uh, black tea blends that have a little bit of spice or a little bit of adds to them and you get these sort of like floral baking spice, little herbal, little anise and uh, licorice, but mostly rich, sweet candied black tea. Mmm, I like it. I actually I like it a lot. I, it's got more complexity to it than my memory of their standard bourbon. And I I, I wish I could A B them right now. I'm gonna put a little water in this because it is a hundred proof. <laughs> and it's breakfast. Um This is very much house profile whiskey for still Austin. I think everything I've had from them lives in that sort of like really consistent uh, tea and uh, mix of herb and floral and oak, and but the oak's always a light touch and it's not overly tannined or astringent, very soft and approachable. Mm. The water bumps the grain to the front and it pushes that, that just classic bourbon spice to the nose. Mm. And then the cherry starts to come through. There you go. Little bit of cherry, slight soft chocolate cherry, but quickly buried in uh, green garden floral. And anyway, it's very interesting. This is a cool one. Um, I don't know where you can get this one. Uh, obviously in Texas. I know uh, all the stores around me have it, but it is a smaller release and they're doing a whole series of seasonal releases. Uh, you can find out more info on their website for those. Okay, so... You do have to stand out from your competitors. And you do need to talk about things in a way that sets you apart from your competitors. But what I would posit, and what we would say at Wizard Academy, is the thing that makes you unique is you, and your story, and why you care, and how that becomes a part of the human story, of the human drive, and the human desires, and how do people identify with you in that caring. And so it's not a unique selling proposition. It doesn't have to do with the product or the service that you provide. It has to do with you and why you chose, of all things, that product and that service and why you continue to care and why you continue to deliver that product or that service. What drives you? What gets you up in the morning? And how does that make you human? And how does that overlap with the story of how we're all human? So it turns out that it's not a unique selling proposition. It's a unique uh, like business owner, effectively, proposition. You are the one thing that your competitors can't replicate. If you can tell your story of why you got into this thing and why it matters and why it's important and why you're doing something that matters in a way that it's because remember the other thing that is opposite equal profound truth. The other thing we always say at Wizard Academy is no one cares about you and your stupid product. <laughs> they care about how you're going to change their life. 
But in order to tell an honest story about how you're going to change someone's life, you need to be a human character so that people can identify and understand who is this, what is it, and why. And then the people in the world who also feel that way about the world will go, oh, this is my people. Now, that's something that you can't replicate with another business. If we tell the the story of why you choose to do these special processes and these special things and why it matters to you and why it's important because of your story, no competitor can ever replicate that. They might be able to replicate your process, but what you'll find is that the people who have no guts to tell their original story and really stick to it or have no original story really, um, they'll focus all their energy only on process, only on process, and how the special way they do this thing, the special way they do that thing. And what you'll find as a consumer is you might admire them. Oh, that's a lot of effort for that process. That's a lot of work. But you're, you don't connect with them emotionally on those. You need vulnerability and you need a human story. And this is why it's always frustrating to find marketing, consulting, branding agencies who try to harp in on only process and only product instead of finding the human beings behind the stories and behind the businesses. Uh, now, obviously, this is aimed at small business owners more than it would be giant corporations. That's a much harder story to tell, but it's still possible with giant ones. Just go watch all the advertising that Guinness does, and you'll see how they connect with the human story instead of with just the process of making beer or why their beer is better than everyone else's. So tell your own story. Stop looking for bullshit selling propositions. <laughs> I'm really glad you're here. Cheers.